Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. I am Wilson Harwood, an acoustician and studio designer based in Nashville, Tennessee. And today I'm gonna to teach you guys all about how to design your home recording studio around existing pipes, um, existing beams, and existing structural beams that may be uh, in your studio that are causing you headaches over how do I design around this? So I'm gonna give you three different projects that I've been working on over the past year and go through three different examples of how you could approach existing pipes, beams, and structural supports in your home recording studio. Before I jump in, I wanna let you know that I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproof workshop, and it's 45 minutes of in-depth teaching going over everything you need to know about how to soundproof and approach the overall design of your home recording studio. So to learn more about that and watch it right away, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com workshop, that is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to soundproof around existing beams, pipes, and supports. All righty, so some of you may have seen this already. Two weeks ago, I made a, a comprehensive video about one of my client's studios here, but this is another great example. I wanted to go more in depth about this existing I-beam that was in her basement that we needed to soundproof around and how I approached that design um, for isolation and also for the acoustic treatment here. So as you can see, here's the I-beam. Um, it's about a foot, you know, long and about, I think eight inches wide or something. And it posed an, an annoying problem, of course, in all studio design, but not to fear, it's not too difficult to get around these. So here's the existing floor joists from above uh, that are holding up our ceiling. And I've used hush frame rafts, which I'm a big fan of now, and I'll make another video on that soon. The idea is that the hush frame rafts attach directly to your ceiling joists, and then you use one by three furring channel to then attach your drywall to the one by three furring channel, which then attach, attaches to the hush frame raft. And what's nice about them is that they have a very low clearance. So you only lose one inch, including the distance of the raft plus the one by three furring channel from your existing ceiling joist. Plus you get the benefit of a decoupled system because the hush frame rafts have a silicone piece in them that reduces the amount of sound that can transfer from the ceiling joist into your drywall that you have on your ceiling. So I love them. Uh, we just installed them in a studio last week and it was really cool to see them in action. So uh, they've been really helpful. They are a little on the expensive side, but uh, if you're gonna do this the right way, I would say using these is probably better than the rigid IB1 clips, which I used to recommend because those don't have any way to really decouple uh, beyond just adding more layers between the actual studs and the drywall. So there's no actual like silicone or rubber that's creating uh, a sound barrier for vibration, which is something that I'm more concerned about these days with these isolation systems. Um, so anyways, these clips, you then just have to put a furring channel on either side of the beam. And I like to leave at least, you know, one inch air gap if I can around the beam or half an inch, whatever works best for the design. And then I'm filling insulation in around this I-beam so that we don't get any structural vibrations inside that cavity. So whenever we build a cavity around the beam, we still wanna put insulation in there. It can be cheap fiberglass insulation if you want. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or soundproof rated. So that is the general idea. And then it gets even crazier when you wrap it around. So. Now you gotta imagine we're having, what I like to do is I like to put in a wood structural support system. Uh, and I'm just gonna like remove some of these so you can see this um, a little bit more clearly. So this structural is like a, I think it's a one by two. I just double check. Yeah, it's gonna be a one by two structural support that's actually drilled in and attached to our, um, our beam above. Um, so that structural beam is attached right here to this furring channel, which is decoupled. So if we go back under here, then we can attach our drywall directly to this structural support. And then the bottom drywall here attaches to the drywall that was right here. So if I go back and put these two layers of drywall on here, you can see that they're, they're, uh, staggered, which is always a good idea. And then all this crazy stuff here is me trying to diagram the backer rod and acoustic sealant, which in future de designs I might not do because it was so much work and I don't know. It kind of gets the point across, but basically each layer you're trying to 
make sure that you decouple the drywall from drywall ceiling from your wall uh, drywall and and this is not like the end of the world but it's an added bonus if you can actually decouple them a little bit leave like a quarter inch gap and fill it with baccarat and acoustic caulk i like this design because it means less sound vibration can travel through the drywall and into our wall so it's again another layer of assurance that we're going to have less sound vibrating inside our drywall walls and ceiling uh, if you're overwhelmed by this, uh, that makes sense. This is a lot of like the little detailed work that's super annoying. Um, so that's why I'm trying to show you guys this so it makes sense. Uh, so that's the basic general idea with this one. So now I want to show you another project. And this is one for a client I'm building in the studio. As you can see, I've mapped out the studio here. This one's been really fun. It's not in as detailed as of a state yet. I, as you can see, I still have like blocked out. I do blocked out walls. And then eventually I go in and do like all the heavy, very specific uh, detailed work with individual studs and things like that as necessary. But this, this room you can see is interesting. I don't know if this is obvious. Let me see if I can make this a little bit more clear. So we have our ceiling joists going above. 16 inches on center across the room. Um, and then there's a wood beam. This is like two two by eights put together, I think. Um, so there's a wood beam. And then on the other side of the wood beam is existing ductwork from like the 50s <laughs> that we can't touch. It's like these four inch ducts and it, it does weird things. It comes out over here longer and it comes out less over here. And then this ductwork goes above and supplies to the room above. So I've diagrammed the black ductwork in here to show the existing duct worked in the plans and my job as the designer and the acoustician is to then look at this and say okay how in the world do we isolate this and still make their still have enough space for the client so this is a weird one we also have these metal support beams that are clearly added in to hold up this support beam across here so we've got the vertical metal support beams, which are common in a lot of basements and garages and things like that. And then this support beam, which is also common in garages and basements that holds up the house. So this is always gonna be a problem no matter what soundproof build you're doing, you're gonna come across something like this, uh, unless it's a new build. And even then it, you might come across a beam support that you have to have. So my solution was a similar thing. I'm gonna use the hush frame rafts, which I haven't diagrammed in yet. And they're gonna come around this beam and then go under. Another thing that we have is the dang garage opener on this side. So there's a limitation to how far my wall can go out over here. So I've got the actual structural wall here. And then this is crazy. Let me do the ceiling so you can see my design for the ceiling. So the ceiling is gonna come in around under this beam and it's gonna attach into this wall. And I have to like update this a little bit. But, and then there's gonna be another vertical layers of drywall around here, four layers of drywall around this beam, so that we're essentially getting an air, like four layers of drywall, air gap, and this is gonna be, you know, one by twos or something like that to hold all this in from the ceiling with hush frame rafts. It's all gonna be crazy, but similar idea to what I showed you with Melissa that we're gonna do here. And then if I drop down here, you're gonna see this is four, I think we're leaning on three layers of drywall. I tried to convince them that I wanted four layers of drywall because it's a drum studio, but you know, it's very small space and we always have to make some, uh, some decisions here where we don't have the optimum soundproofing. So we have more space. So this is just real life examples for you guys. Uh, the wrapping around these beams, I'll show you, we turn, I'm turning them into a cool shelf, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, but basically this is how it looks. And if I pull out, this is like, but anyways, you can see here a cross section of how this will all go together roughly. Again, this is my rough sketch. I get more in depth as the plans progress. Um, so now let's look at these beams, the beams. So this is like one of those things where it's never perfect, but you do the best you can. And so basically with this, what I, I have these metal beams. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some uh, pipe wrap. So. Whenever you have a beam, you can use something like this. Uh, this is from Trademark Soundproofing. This will work. You know, I, I think it's totally fine. This is not supposed to be the end all soundproofing. Like you can't just put this around a pipe and be like, it's soundproof, but it definitely helps. And then the quiet wrap, I'm, I think it's more money, but I think it's a better product. Um, basically it's like self adhesive. It's meant, it seems like it's easy to install, which is like a huge thing when your installer, your contractor is like, this is already an enormous amount of work. 
let's make it easy. Um, and then it's basically like a mass loaded vinyl type rubber heavy mass thing. And then there's polyurethane foam on the inside, like an open cell foam. So you're getting both mass and decoupling around the pipe wrap, which I like, which is the neoprene rubber, depending on how much weight it has, can also do that, but it's probably less mass than this, uh, which you could do the math down here. They actually tell you it's like 21 pounds for a roll and you have to just do the math, which I just don't feel like doing right now. But I would buy this. This is what I would recommend for this client to say, hey, we're gonna put this on around the pipe first and then we're gonna do what I'm gonna show you next. So within these cavities, we have the same issue. And I'm really, he, this client is really like, we need the most space possible. So I'm constantly having to get these closer than I'd like to the pole. The more air gap we have, the better. Also, I would put insulation in this cavity around the pole as well. So we just, again, reduce any of the resonance that will build up within a cavity. And then same principle applies. We need thick, heavy, massive walls around this barrier. So the back of this cavity will be our existing wall, which is good. But then the part that protrudes in the room, what I wanted to do was create something. It was like a one by two frame. And then I added like two layers of three quarter inch plywood on top of it to try to get some mass around this and how you do this is up to you as the designer you know we're always dealing with small spaces we're always trying to add more mass so you could use mass loaded vinyl when you're in a pinch like really thin layers of mass loaded vinyl could help with this but whatever you can do to get mass around that is the idea insulation and the pipe wrap that's my main point with these types of beams and then a bonus if you can turn it into a shelf like we did uh it's even better right it serves multi multiple purposes and provides soundproofing as well so that is that let me show you one other really interesting project that i think you'll find fascinating all right this is a project i designed inside an existing backyard shed like one of these huge like metal sheds you know with like these existing um truss systems up here that are super challenging to design around uh and this client was insistent on utilizing the height of the existing shed in their studio design but they also didn't want to have the the recording studio take up the whole space because the rest of the space needed to be used for something else and what was really challenging about the studio i mean there were so many things that were challenging about this design one was i decided to end up doing a flat roof a raised part and then a flat roof again to give them this unique setup with the pitch of the roof to get the ceiling height above the piano so that's just like a little bit of my design ideas, but you'll see these weird sheaths, like sheathing around the existing beams that were going through the studio. Like literally they're going through the walls. This is like not fun for the um, contractor. And I would say if you're on a budget, like don't do stuff like this. I think, I think like the smartest thing for this studio design would have been like, Hey, I can't get the ceiling height. Let me just build like a really awesome studio, you know, with still like maybe like nine, 10 foot ceilings, um, that avoids all of these beams. Cause every time you introduce these beams, I'll show you what you have to do. You have to literally decouple it. Like as it's going through the drywall here, it can't touch our drywall. Like no part of this beam, this is all using hat channels can touch it. So then I have to then build a massive thing that's decoupled around the beam. So these are the hat channels directly attached around the beam. I'm not using hush frame rafts in this design. You can see how there's insulation there, um, a little bit of space around the beam. And then I use wood around that. This is like half inch plywood around here and there'll be insulation in here as well. And also, so half inch plywood uh, and then five eighths inch drywall. And so those are like, these are like specialty little she sheathing. <laughs> I don't know, it's like a, a sheath for a knife or something. And that's like what is going around here. And you actually would see this finished beam in her studio, like this part right here, you would see where it drops out is actually where it hits the top. Um, this is all so complex. Like this is the, the OSB ceiling, you know, two layers of OSB for mass on the top and the baffle boxes and stuff. And these are like going out through, you can see it's like going out around the outside. And then this has to be like acoustically cocked around here to make sure it's airtight. And all these existing beams have to be accounted for in the design. So it's, it's a really challenging design. You can see them going through here as well. Um, so on the outside penetration, everything can touch the drywall. In fact, you want to make it airtight, but on the inside, you want to leave a little gap and still make it airtight. So these are the challenges. Like I said, I would never really do this again. I think it's really challenging, but for this client, it worked out really well and it, it afforded us to get much more ceiling height in the studio and still keep it isolated. All right, so as you can see, there are so many scenarios where you may have to think creatively 
in your soundproofing design for your home recording studio. And over the years, I've learned a lot about how I like to do this and I'm constantly changing it. As you can see, even in these three designs, like I have different clips, I have different approaches. And so every time I design a studio, I'm learning, I'm growing. Um, and then another thing I'll say is like, one really important thing that the wisdom I can provide you guys is that it's so expensive to tell contractors and builders to do weird stuff like this. Like they just, it's like building a, a house is hard enough as it is. And then you tell them like, let's make it way more complicated. And they're just like, okay, I'm going to charge, you know, way more money and it just takes more labor. So every time you do something weird like this in soundproof design, be aware that the trade-off is money and, and time and money because they're equated. So it's like, be aware of that. If you have a ton of beams and poles and weird stuff, maybe shift to a different location. I mean, there's lots of things to take from this. And then if you do have like a support beam or some support poles or, you know, truss beams like I had in this last example, really think through, okay, how do I want to do this? Do I want to go into the truss beams? Do I want to stay under them and know the trade-offs and what it takes to actually do this correctly? All right, so I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if any of you guys are interested in, you know, hiring me, shameless plug here, you can always sign up for a Soundproof Clarity call on my website at soundproofyourstudio.com. Uh, I do only take on serious clients, so, you know, if your project's not, you know, big enough, it's probably not worth either of our time. So that's why I do this channel, just so that so many of you who are on a smaller, lower DIY budget can definitely learn a lot and, and grow in your knowledge. Um, and then for the rest of you guys who are on this journey, definitely check out that free soundproofing workshop as well, because that is a great resource for looking at everything I teach on this channel in like a condensed 45 minute version. Um, so it's really useful, save your time. And, um, all you have to do is, you know, put your email address in there and you can access it right away. It's totally free. So that's at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Um, I'm Wilson Harwood. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all next week with more information on home recording studio design so you can build that dream studio. All right, I'll see you all later.